All right, hey guys. So today we're working on the Fast AI lesson two. We're gonna convert a bunch of photos that we took ourselves. We're gonna put them in folders and then we're going to train a classifier. All right, so let's say, for instance, that you've created your own data set and you want to use the Fast AI library to make it easy to train a classifier. So first, what you'll need to do is you'll need to create this data set, but once you've done that, you're going to upload it to Google Cloud, all right? So, well, which is a part of your Gmail. So just to show you guys, this is my, my folder. So the top folder is called data, and then inside of that, it's train. And then inside of that, there's a bunch of photos. And as you can see here, I've uh, created my own personal data set. And the naming structure I've used is whatever the title is, underscore, and whatever number it is, in the sequence of photos and this here and you need to import fast AI and then you need to also connect your you need to mount your drive and if you want to see how that works you would just click here files and you can press uh, mount drive and this will pop up right here. and you just gotta wait a moment and if we look over here boom here we are we have access to our drive all the stuff okay so then here is a script that I put together and essentially it's just going to separate all of the names and the images it's going to create um, arrays and dictionaries that have indexes to each label right so right here you see my images equals fn for fn in os dot list directory and this is the file path this is really important right here. And whatever it finds inside this file path, if it ends with a JPEG, that's going to be like one individual photo. It'll recognize every single photo in there because of the fact that they're all JPEGs. So how do you get this? All right, you come over here, click drive, my drive. And whatever your, your data is stored, you need to click into these until you find and right here this is all I need I just need train you click copy path and you can paste it over here all right and when you run this you will see that it says three and what it's saying in is that in my data set there are three different uh, categories and as you can see here these three categories are stand up ground 50 50 the length of my images is 1978 which means that's that's how many photos there are in my training data set and then this is just shows you the array with all of them okay all the names so we need to do is we need to create a new folder more like we need to create a, 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 a parent folder and then subfolders which will have these uh, these small ones so First off, we run folder for each category, and then we come down here and we run this, which when we refresh, we see that it's now created a new path called data, and inside of that, it says UFC, right here, data, UFC, and inside of that, it says stand up, and then we need to do this for the ground, and now we check again, boom, there it is. There's nothing inside here. Not yet. Okay. So, and then just to make sure, if you don't want to check over here, you can check over here. And it shows you data UFC stand up, data UFC ground. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take all the photos from my drive, the drive, my drive, data, train folder. And we're going to run a giant for loop. And in this loop, it's going to check the very first index. So it says 4x in range of length of my images, which remember, my images is this guy down here, right? What we print, my images, all the names. And what it's doing is it's we're using a variable check, and we're going to assign it to each image name but we're going to index the very first string and we're going to use the check variable to check if it's a g or an s or a five 
if it's a G, it's what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to take that my image name and it's going to make a copy and send it to the ground folder over here. And if it's an S, it's going to send it to the S folder. And since I'm only going to do these stand up and ground and not the 50-50, it's just going to pass. But you can essentially make as many folders as you like. And you can add to this script pretty easy. You just would copy it, and you would just make sure that your naming scheme is different enough that you know there isn't two S's, or I don't know. Maybe you could even add more to how you're checking the string. You could check the whole string; doesn't matter. So we're gonna run this, and this is gonna take a little while. So what you'll see is that it's literally gonna print out every single thing that it's recognizing, and then when it's done, it's gonna print finished. So it's probably going to be over a little over a thousand photos. It's going to take a while and we'll come back after it's done. All right, so now we have finished loading up all the photos. It says finished right here. And if you were to look in here, you would see all these ground photos. So, and all these stand up it's just a bunch of JPEG files that have now been moved over. They've been copied and moved over, and they're only in a temporary file, right? So you guys should remember that these files are only temporary, and they will disappear after 12 hours or whatever the runtime is for CoLab. But anyways, so let's move on. Now we need to use our image data bunch function, <clears throat> and this essentially is, you know, really big part to get training going and I'm not an expert at this if you really want to know what's going on you can check it out in the fast AI documentation obviously there's just it's it's pretty straightforward it's like here's where the data is here's the validations like you can read all this stuff so I'm just going to show you how my data set works with this and by running it <coughs> you have your path to the fold to the files and you have your train set and how many validations, and that's 20%. So that means 20% of whatever number of photos I have is going to be used for validating how accurate the model is. And now this is just some more information about everything, right? So we have our data.classes, ground, stand up. There's two classes. This is how many photos there are 1,224 training, 305 are validation. All right, and stand up, ground, stand up. Anyways, so now this is how we're going to do the transfer learning. We're going to load. We're going to load the ResNet 50 model. Then once it's done, this is uh, going to be the first training cycle. And make sure you guys have your GPUs on. Right, you just click here. Put GPU save. All right. If you've gotten to this point and you didn't have the GPU on, it will reset everything. So, sorry about that. Should have mentioned at the beginning, but oh well. All right. So now that we have our first cycle trained, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to dot save the first stage and then over here if you see right here we have our models stage one dot th this is where we're going to be saving this so we can reference this uh, this later now next we're going to find the learning rate and um, for my data set sometimes this works and then sometimes I have to use this cell right here just kind of depends um, so try this cell and then once this is done you're gonna put learn dot record dot plot and it's going to essentially do this it's gonna create a graph and you're gonna see you know where where do you need to set your training training rate oh actually it just says it's complete all right so now I'm gonna do this yeah, it didn't seem to like it. All right, so I'll come down here and I will set where the learning rate should start and end. And 
see how that works. All right, so wow, this is a really not a great, <laughs> not a great set. Usually the lines are a lot more easily defined, but anyways, that, that that's all right. So here's our graph, and what we want to do is we want to find the most downward sloping learning rate, and um, I'm gonna say, hmm. I mean, it's consistently going down. It's just that I don't know what's more valuable, starting at this point to here, or if it's the rate of change. So I'm just going to kind of go with a general approach here. All right, I'm going to do the, the one that Jeremy uses, um, 3 to 3 to 3e to 5. So it would be here, somewhere down here. Maybe I might even extend it to like six, just because it seems like this whole area is going down. So I will start from three e three, which I believe is here on the axis, and then over to roughly here. So hopefully that's enough of a learning rate that it's going down that it will it will train really well. So I need to save. I need to run this one now and we'll wait again all right so now we're done training again and we're gonna resave the model and we're gonna see how it does we're gonna load the model And then from here, we're going to run the next couple cells. And essentially, it's going to classify and interpret everything it sees. And then we'll run a confusion matrix. And then we'll see what our top losses were. So we'll get four photos with the worst scores. So let's see how we did. We did pretty good. Um, only missed one. So it looks like. We predicted a stand up and it was actually a ground, but out of all of the photos, we only missed one. Um, but let's see what the reason was. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's the photo I should probably take out. I can see how the model's confused. That's actually a 50 50 photo. That's actually not in the right category. But, I mean, the model obviously gets what's going on here. So. That's great. Now it works. Um, so let's move on and I'll add some cells and we'll, we'll run a test on a bunch of images and kind of see how it does. All right, guys. So the next, what you need to do is you need to run learn.export and that's going to create this .pkl file and then make sure to download it because you're going to want to keep it. This is all in a temporary folder and it will delete itself after a while and in future videos I'll show you how to reuse this file but since you're already trained everything and you're still in the same uh, notebook you can come down here and you can write this learn equals load learner path and remember this path is from all the way up to the top when you created the path to the data folder let's see it's right here right here all right so we're just referencing it and we're running it. And then from here, if I go over here into uh, uploads, because I'm I, I can create a folder and we could write a script that references it, but just to make it simple, um, I'm gonna load up some photos and show you some examples of my model in action. So if I load this one, if I load this one. Alright, so let's see. Brazil. 
All right, shows the image. And then, let's see. Da, da, da. We need to make a prediction. All right. So I'm going to add this line of code here. And this should print me out a prediction as to whether they're on the ground or standing. And boom, look at that. Predicts they're on the ground. Now let's do DC. All right. Obviously on the ground. Again, on the ground. And now let's do Donald versus Leon. All right, obviously standing, and it can tell the difference. All right, so there you go. That's how you make an image classifier with fast AI, and how you can then make predictions on top of it. And if you and that's how you use fast AI with Google Colab. I also just want to make a quick reference to the deep learning cookbook. I referenced chapter nine for the photos, so I could make those temporary folders and place all the photos inside of there and organize everything. So it's a great book. I'm going to put a link down below 